Hi class, another quick review video about hurricanes in chapter 12. Let's do this question from the give it some thought section at the end of the chapter. So we have this hypothetical scenario. It's late September of the year 2016 and Hurricane Gaston, uh, category 5 storm, is projected to follow this path shown below and hit eastern Texas and move inland just east of Dallas-Fort Worth. So let's answer some questions. First, what are the stages of development that Gaston must have gone through to become a hurricane. At what point did it, re it receive its name? Well, let's start with the beginning, um, the development of a hurricane in the Atlantic. We typically see development occurring in the East Atlantic off the coast of West Africa here as convective thunderstorms um, develop into tropical disturbances and then they move in the westerly direction um, because of the trade winds pushing them to the west and then move into the Gulf of Mexico. Notice there's this band of warm sea surface, sea, warm sea surface temperatures that feeds and fuels the hurricane in their development. So a hurricane forms first as a tropical disturbance. So that's going to be the first stage. Um, what we have here, this is showing um, uh, Airflow and notice how these lines are converging in what we call this tropical wave. The poleward movement here is the side, the converging side, and um, that converging flow is associated with the formation of tropical disturbances. So they start as thunderstorms, they begin to develop um, some sort of cyclonic rotation then because of the Coriolis effect. And in general, these waves are moving, they're called easterly waves, easterly waves, and they are generally moving from east to west because of the trade winds here. So as these tropical disturbances get warmer, um, the surface pressure drops which is going to create a low pressure system and that supports that cyclonic circulation. Low pressure system means we have rising air, which we know that that is going to lead to cloud development and precipitation. And up at the top, because you have all that air piling up, you do have a high pressure, but you have to have divergence aloft to maintain, to support that low pressure system. Um, once we have that uh, circulation going, if the winds stay less than 39 miles per hour, then we call it a tropical depression. And then as the storm develops and the wind speeds exceed 39 miles per hour, then it becomes a tropical storm. And that is the point at which it's given a name. And the names each year are issued alphabetically with the first storm giving a name that starts with the letter A. So we know that Gaston had been preceded by named storms. Um, a through F. Uh, once the wind speed exceeds 74 miles per hour, then it becomes a Category 1 hurricane, and then onwards up through Category 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we know Gaston has achieved wind speeds of 155 miles an hour or more than 250 kilometers per hour. Okay, our next question. What would we expect um, to be happening in Houston as Gaston hits, uh, makes landfall. So would Houston expect to experience Gaston's fastest winds and greatest storm surge, and why or why not? Well, let's look at the structure of a typical hurricane in the Atlantic hitting the coast. Um, this is an example showing the a hurricane hitting North Carolina and South Carolina, but same thing would happen as Gaston hit Texas. Um, because we have counterclockwise circulation patterns and the storm is moving in that direction, the winds to the east of the eye are going to be the strongest because you have the combination of that counterclockwise circulation with the movement of the storm. And so land or areas to the east of the eye are going to experience both the highest wind and the highest storm surge because that storm surge is, is helped um, part of the pileup of the storm surges occurs because of the wind. If you're west of the eye, then you don't experience as strong of winds. Notice the wind speed over here east of the eye is higher than it is west of the eye. So if we go back to where Houston is, if this is the track of Gaston, and we have that 
counterclockwise circulation pattern, it's this area over here that's going to experience the highest winds and, and greatest storm surge in Houston is not going to experience that. Okay, next question. What's the greatest threat to life and property if the storm approaches the Dallas-Fort Worth area? Well, they're not on the coast. They're not going to get the storm surge. By the time the storm has moved over land, um, its winds will have dissipated because of some frictional influence um, as it moves over land. There's greater resistance over land than there is over water. So its winds will have dissipated. But what we'd expect to see is really heavy precipitation and inland flooding. And that is the the biggest threat to life and property that we'll see as the storm moves inland and hits the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So let me know if you have any questions.